Hey guys and welcome to The Broken Sword. Today we are looking at the Lord of the Iron Hills and King Under the Mountain, Dane Ironfoot. As with a few other prominent characters from The Hobbit, such as Thranduil for example, not being involved in the storyline of The Lord of the Rings, or for in story, The War of the Ring, it's extremely interesting to us at least to look deeper into Tolkien's works to discover what these sorts of characters were actually doing during these times. So let's find out. So before we get too far into his whereabouts and dealings during the War of the Ring, we will give you a bit of a backstory for Dane, for those of you that are interested or just don't know. Dane Ironfoot was born in the year 2767 of the Third Age. He was the son of Nain and the grandson of Gror, who was the youngest son of Dane I of Durin's Folk. During the War of the Dwarves and Orcs at the Battle of Azanul Bizar, Dane's father Nain was slain by the Orc chieftain Azog, and in a rather brutal fashion. It is told that Nain swung his axe towards Azog with all of his might, but the orc darted aside and kicked out Nain's leg, then with a swift swing, hewed his neck. His main collar withstood the edge of the blade, but so powerful and heavy was the blow that it broke Nain's neck. Dain was quick to seek revenge. Up the steps after him leapt a dwarf with a red axe. It was Dain Ironfoot, Nain's son. Right before the doors he caught Azog, and there he slew him, and hewed off his head. That was held as a great feat, for Dane was only a stripling in the reckoning of the dwarves. So, small side note here to complain a little about the Hobbit movie adaptions. If you are only familiar with these characters from these movies, then you will see here that Tolkien's vision from them was very different to what ended up being on screen, and in my opinion, it hugely takes away from the importance of some of these characters. Dane should have been the one to kill Azog, and the orcs should have been led by Bolg, Azog's son, during the Battle of the Five Armies. I think this would have been way cooler, and some of the decisions made by Peter Jackson and team for The Hobbit will never make much sense to me. Anyway, apologies for the rant, let's get back to it. So after killing Azog, Dane's feat was considered as a glorious triumph for a dwarf of such a young age, earning himself respect from many of the other dwarves. After the battle, Thrain was content to re-enter Khazad Doom, but with such great wisdom, Dane turned to him and said, But we will not enter Khazad Doom. You will not enter Khazad Doom. Only I have looked through the shadow of the gate. Beyond the shadow it waits for you still, Durin's Bane. The world must change and other powers than ours must come before Durin's folk walk again in Moria. After this, Dane went back to the Iron Hills. It is said that his kingdom in the Iron Hills was so great that they were amongst the only people truly capable of dealing with Sauron's forces at that time. So Dane eventually responded to his cousin Thorin's call for help in his quest to reclaim the Lonely Mountain. A great battle of course followed, and upon Thorin's death, Dane became King of Erebor, and it was him that honoured Thorin's commitments to Bard the Bowman and to Bilbo Baggins, giving them a share of the mountain's treasure. So being King under the mountain also came with the title of King of Durin's Folk. Dane was considered to be a wise and fair leader. He brought much wealth to the mountain realm and maintained a strong relationship with the Men of Dale as well as the elven King Thranduil. This ensured peace to his people for many years to come. When Balin and other dwarves decided it was time to try and reclaim Moria, Dane refused, but Balin insisted on going. This of course did not work out too well, and proves the great wisdom of the King of Durin's folk once again. So now we are up to the time of the War of the Ring. A few months before the Council of Elrond, a messenger from Mordor appeared at the entrance of Erebor and offered the dwarves an alliance with the Dark Lord. All that Sauron wanted in return was that the dwarves share what they knew of the hobbits and to help him track down the One Ring. Sauron promised the dwarves that if they could deliver to him the One Ring itself, then he would reward them by returning to them three of the rings of power that had originally belonged to the dwarf lords, and that Moria would be theirs to possess forever. The messenger went on to warn them that if they refused the alliance, then things would not seem so well. Knowing from experience that Sauron could not be trusted, Dane refused to be bribed and threatened. He sent the messenger away without an answer and told him that he would need time to think about the proposal. Instead, he sent Gloin to Rivendell to consult with Elrond, and then prepared the Lonely Mountain for war. A brave and noble leader indeed. Dane participated in the War of the Rings Northern Campaign, fighting in what ended up being the decisive battle in the north, the Battle of Dale. While the southern armies of the Dark Lord attacked Gondor, Sauron sent a large force of Easterlin allies to assault Dale to prevent his enemies from joining forces. 
The combined forces of Dale under the command of King Brand and the dwarves of Erebor under the command of Dane met the Easterlings in battle on the 17th of March 3019. Though they were likely largely outnumbered, the men and dwarves were better equipped thanks to the armories of the Lonely Mountain. They held out for three days of constant fighting, but were eventually forced to retreat inside the mountain. It was here that Brand fell at the mountain's gate. Dave bravely defended the body of the King of Dale, but was soon overwhelmed and killed himself. He was, at this point, an extremely old dwarf, although he was still very, very strong for the age of 252. In fact, he was still amongst the greatest of the dwarven warriors, a direct descendant of Durin, and his prowess in battle was almost unmatched, even at this late age. After news of his death reached Minas Tirith, Gandalf stated that although the dwarves should be saddened of Dane's death, they should be glad that he died in battle, defending the body of a friend, as well as amazed that he was still as formidable a warrior as he had been when he was young. I should call that a heavy loss, if it was not a wonder, rather in his great age he could still wield his axe as mightily as they say he did, standing over the body of King Brand before the gate of Erebor until the darkness fell. After his death, his son Thorin Stonehelm succeeded him as king. Of course, if you guys would like to see a full video on the Battle of Dale, we do already have one of those on the channel, so go and check that out if you want to know more details. So there we have it, that's a brief history on Dane Ironfoot, as well as details about his whereabouts during the War of the Ring. Personally, Dane is one of my absolute favourite characters in all of Middle-earth and Tolkien's mythology. I've said it before, but I never used to be a fan of the Dwarven race in general. That was until we started this channel and we started delving much deeper into the lore and I found that the Dwarves have such a rich history and they are extremely fascinating characters, Dane being at the top of that list for me. Before we go, I would of course like to thank all of our amazing patrons and an extra special shout out goes to the members of our highest tiers, Kevin, Abram, Matt, Nasheath, Denver Steel, Gregory, John and Andrew. We cannot put into words how much we appreciate you guys. That's it from me today, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Lord of the Rings and Middle-earth content. And don't forget to check out our other channels. We've recently, in the last few months, launched The Batcave, which is a channel very similar to this, but purely based around Batman and DC characters. If you're interested in that, feel free to check it out and consider subscribing if you enjoy. Okay, thank you all again. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.